Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. This is 5x5 and I'm Simon. If you haven't already, grab your fave bevy, a seat, and let's get into it. And we're back today talking about Star Wars Celebration Europe 2003. So I think the big reveals that came out of this weekend were the Ahsoka trailer, the Skeleton Crew trailer, and the Acolyte trailer. For anybody that didn't know, there is a live action Ahsoka TV series coming soon. It's been in development for the past year and it will air this summer in August. They are also developing two other TV shows, Skeleton Crew and The Acolyte. The Acolyte takes place in the High Republic era of the Republic in the Star Wars universe. So it represents a timeline that's totally untouched and they're not really bound by any specific rules or, or cameos or characters and they don't have to connect any storylines with anything else if they don't want to or they don't have to. So that's the advantage of that one. And then the other show, Skeleton Crew, is supposed to be sort of a Goonies or Amblin Entertainment themed Star Wars uh, movie that follows a, like a group of kids from the Republic that got caught up in the battle of the Empire. I'm not really sure how that really works, but they showed trailers for all three of them. The Ahsoka trailer, of course, went public. The other two trailers have been kept under wraps. They have not been released publicly yet. They were just meant for the Star Wars Celebration audience. The Ahsoka trailer, of course, was released publicly. There was two versions. Uh, the Star Wars Celebration version had some additional footage and then the public international trailer. If you haven't seen it yet, well, you're about to. Something's coming. Something dark. I sense it. This is a new beginning. For some, war. For others, power. In a while, things have changed. I started hearing whispers about Thrawn's return as heir to the Empire. We have to prepare for the worst. Jedi fell a long time ago. There aren't many left. Perhaps it is time to begin again. I'm excited. I'm a huge Ahsoka fan, so I'm excited to see the show. I will absolutely be talking about it. If it's any good, I will be talking about it a lot. And if it's not very good, I will be really disappointed and I will share that with you as well, probably. The next big thing confirmed was Tales of the Jedi Season 2. It is coming. Uh, and the other big confirmation is Bad Batch Season 3 is also coming and Dave Filoni has confirmed that it will be the final season of Bad Batch. So they'll wrap up any loose ends and storylines and plots and all that, theoretically, uh, in this next coming year. And I, I'm not sure if I'm saving the best for last because I feel like the Ahsoka trailer was probably the best. Um, but Lucasfilm also did announce three new movies. One movie is going to be based on the High Republic era. The next movie is going to be based on the sequel trilogy era. And the last movie is going to wrap up the existing Disney Plus TV series, uh, TV shows like Book of Boba Fett, Mandalorian, Ahsoka, all of the threads that they've all been weaving towards in their TV shows, their separate TV shows, they're all going to wrap up in a movie. And Dave Filoni himself is going to be directing for the first time, directing that movie. So that one has a lot of buzz around it. 
And I wanted to finish with this news because I think it's the most interesting. I've seen a lot of really interesting takes on, on this particular piece of news. So I wanted to end on it so I could kind of elaborate on that, all of this. I am really excited about a High Republic-based movie. I think that has a lot of potential and the only real overlap or cameo that you might expect would be a Yoda cameo because Yoda is a thousand years old. And so this would mean he is just a young guy in this movie. Um, but aside from that one possible character, there won't be any overlap. Everything else will be totally fresh. And the idea of exploring the beginning of the Jedi as an order and the discovery of the Force and the origins of the Jedi and the Sith, all of that I think is very interesting. So I, I am super excited about that. The Mandoverse movie, I guess we could call it, and the sequel trilogy movie, I have a lot more complicated feelings about and I am not nearly as optimistic about. In theory, I think I, I'm dying to see Dave Filoni do a movie. I think that is amazing and he deserves to be rewarded for basically saving Star Wars for Lucasfilm after George left. On the other hand, I think tying up all these different TV shows into a movie, I think, I don't know if, I, I, I've, I have this feeling that he is being set up for failure. He's a genius. I, he could totally pull this off if anybody could, but I think there's a lot of obstacles in his path in terms of setting up a movie that's supposed to pay off for different TV shows, for example. So I am cautiously optimistic about that one. The last movie, the sequel trilogy movie, is even going to be starring Daisy Ridley. And I am the least optimistic about this one for all of the same reasons, yet none of the same reasons that you might think of. The sequel trilogy has been received very um, divisively uh, among fans. And of course, there's a very toxic element of the Star Wars fan base that is vocally against any sort of diversity and representation. And they hated the sequel trilogy. They are likely going to hate this movie and it being based on this. My concerns are obviously not that I'm a gigantic feminist. Uh, I don't have a problem with that. What I am worried about, though, is that, okay, sure, we're hearing that these movies are planned out and they're several years away at this point. But my concern is that these are just movies that are being announced. But I want to know that there's a plan for their, their individual storylines themselves. So if they are successful and demand sequels are in and of themselves, that they have a plan going forward from those, right? So if there's a sequel trilogy for Daisy Ridley, cool, but it has to have a plan going forward because that was the big flaw with the existing sequel trilogy that we have. So let's not bring Daisy Ridley back for a movie and then it ends up being successful and, and has its own sequels that are just as poorly planned and poorly developed as the sequel trilogy that gave her, her her career was, right? The other thing I'm concerned about is Ray's character as a whole. I want a little bit more authentic inclusion in my diversity. Um, I am not a fan of like performative inclusivity and performative div uh, diversity. I want to tell the story of that group. I don't want them to be written like a white character that's just been painted black or painted gay or whatever. And I think the modern entertainment industry does a really bad job of this. Their only concern is making money. They're not concerned about including these groups. Representation matters, but good representation matters more, right? Um, thank you, Ms. King. So yes, I want to see this representation, but I want to see it done right. And if it's just being done for the sake of conning marginalized communities into an audience seat and taking their money, but you're not going to substantively tell our stories, I'm against that. So file this one under more cautious optimism. But that said, I really like Daisy Ridley. She's an amazing actress. So... I just don't want to see her done dirty the way she was in the sequel trilogy. I guess that's where my cautiousness is coming from. So we'll see. Anyway, I wanted to end with those movies so we could talk about that. Now everybody knows that this is what's coming for Star Wars in the next couple of years. This is what they have planned. And of course, we'll talk about it more as these things get closer to coming out. 
That's a wrap for now. Don't forget to click like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Stay safe and take care of each other.